one. Good evening, Thomas. How are you? Hello, I'm great. <laughs> hey, uh, this is Mike and Thomas coming at you with the first last nerdum. Um, as it were, uh, as it stands, uh, we have our our uh, main show already premiering right now. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll get into that, and you can watch that anytime. Or our our big back catalog uh, to uh, to mention a few things to watch that we have seems to get some traction on here here and there. But anyway, this is the first last nerdum uh, with with me and uh, Thomas here. And we are going to this is our grab bag uh, show, and this is a uh, more of a we kind of got off kilter a little bit the last few weeks, but we were back in the groove, and we are excited to kind of go over this. Uh, the first thing out of the out of the gate, uh, do you have anything to say to the to the folks before we get into it? Uh, I would say, no, yeah, it's uh, been uh, going along, and uh, we're approaching our uh, year anniversary, which we'll uh, maybe go into that when we talk about a little bit of, you have a little bit of do news later on. But yeah, we, uh, with the grab bag, um, we uh, we affectionately say we uh, go into it and grab and pull out various things, but we mainly just talk about like news and um, things, the movies that we may have seen that we don't have like a whole podcast to focus on or just various tidbits here and there, and um, so so yeah, the, the there may be a little bit of something for everybody in here. Uh, we try not to spend too much time on one subject so you don't get get bored. Where and uh, and it will go on to the next oh, thing. Yeah. No, I I, I love our I, I love our uh, groove that we found lately. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it serves us well. I think we play off each other very well. And uh, you know, just to kind of touch on Dune a little bit. Well, and we'll get into it at the, at the very end here. But uh, you know, Dune, um, Dune as Star Wars was in 1977, I truly feel that Dune is to 2021, uh, and I only say that I mentioned it briefly before we get into our main topics here because it essentially it was the linchpin I think to get us talking and saying, "Hey, I like this, you like that. Hey, how about we cover this?" And then here we are, year almost a year later, like we're about a week shy or so on the calendar uh, about you know, seven eight nine days away from that point yep. in time right yep. now but yep. it's coming up fast i could i can't believe it and uh, i know that we'll have more to say on this later but i wanted to shout out that um it'll I, eventually become like a national holiday but uh our, our anniversary <laughs> probably not but i think that it is just as important because i i have some takeaways for that but anyway we'll get to that later but anyway most current thing out there right now, if you are into comic books, and we're kind of we're, we're our grab bag, I think touches on a lot of our our roots, and and touches on a lot of things that we we tend to cover. But in any case, that that is the nerdum, of course. Um, first up, though, the first is uh, Black Adam. Um, that's this is in theaters. We're not necessarily reviewing it per se, um, but I did go and see it this weekend, um, and I have not. That was the first movie I've seen in months. So that's saying something right at the bat. The in the last theaters. The theaters. Yeah, in the, <laughs> yeah, going into the theaters to actually go get your popcorn, get your soda pop, get your whatever, and, and, and whatever your favorite things are, and get in that Barca lounge or whatever, and then put your feet up and enjoy the show. Uh, like, this was one that, um, and I actually talked to you about it. I was, like, kind of on the fence. And then I was watching Midnight's Edge, um, and they had their initial, I guess they did uh, pre-screenings. Or screenings uh, last this past week, like Monday through the, the rest of the week, where they invited journalists and influencers and whatever to come through and watch it. And I heard such high praise for it for it just being a good, a damn good movie to to go out and see. Um, I was not going to see this, and then like I, I heard that, and I was like, you know what? I really want. To, I just want to see a wholesome pure comic book action superhero kind of thing and i will say this i'm not going to not going to go into the content or whatever but i will say this um this at one point um in the theater um uh, it was not the same thing like if you recall and i think i asked you this question uh but when you saw avengers the first avengers movie um did people clap and cheer in the theater when you were there Mm -hmm. when you saw it no yeah. they didn't clap and cheer but i i think i went to like um it'd been out for a while and i went to okay. a dollar dollar theater so it, it might have not had the uh, same enthusiasm same thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when i when i uh i asked my brother-in-law he said he saw it one of the, the first few weekends and he's yeah people were clapping people were audibly clapping and cheering or whatever that didn't necessarily happen throughout the movie for this 
but at the very end, uh, and I won't go into it, but like people, there was like a group of kids that like kind of hopping out, but they knew they were smart enough to kind of stay in, foot in, foot out, like to kind of like roll, roll out, like when the credits roll. Then like when that scene happened, no kidding, there was cheering, and it brought. Uh, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I, I did clap and cheer like when I saw what I saw, but um, that's just a testament to how hungry audiences are still. So this genre isn't quite dead. So the superhero genre uh, westerns were a thing for a very long time. Um, superhero comics, show, movies, whatever, are a thing in our current era, and they continue on. Uh, and this was a good re a re a reaffirmation for that. Uh, and I, I just say, go see it uh, and, and be your own judge. Uh, yeah. But I, this this is one that was worth the cost of the price of admission. I was entertained uh, for yeah. sure. And with that, uh, I would highly encourage uh, people to go out and see it. This is like uh, Black Adam. I knew nothing about the comic books. I had no, no, I knew nothing about the lore or the comic books. Like just taking it face value, I have no. Like I'm familiar with some of the characters here, uh, but for the most part, it's it's one to go see, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. So, like, yeah. uh, I encourage. Uh, it would be cool for you to go see it, maybe uh, if if you were so inclined, and uh, yeah, and well, you know, maybe uh, a mini review on it or something in the future. Yeah, yeah, you may be in the comic book. I'm totally not into comic books. I don't know what you're talking about. But, um, <laughs> um, That's no. so funny you say that because uh, so and and I had uh, been um, I, I I went with a very uh, dear uh, friend, uh, my girlfriend. Anyway, but uh, we went to see this movie, and when we got back to the to the uh, car, uh, I was like, oh, you you you'll you'll see you'll see what how how I love DC and I love the whole thing. And uh, I've always I always have this little uh, uh, puff kind of uh, stuffed Superman character in my car, like I wedge in the front on the front dash, and it, it's it stayed there for years. Uh, yeah. And I but I always roll around with that in the car because I love Superman. Like I, I just like that is just like one of my all time favorite uh, mm -hmm. comic book heroes that I always return to, and I love Batman too. But Superman has a special place in my heart. Anyway. Uh, so like it, yeah, so uh, that's awesome. I didn't even know you were wearing that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always uh, keep it tight, so yeah, you don't uh, don't get to see uh, the full ensemble. But uh, but yeah, Indeed. I I haven't I haven't watched uh, Black Adam. Uh, I uh, yeah, I'm a, a bit of a hermit, so I have uh, rarely get out the theaters uh, nowadays. But yeah, this one that I I contemplated seeing in theaters. Uh, I like um like you. I don't know a whole lot about. Uh, black adam but i've been finding Nothing. out more and more Nothing. each day uh yeah. i do like the um dr fate that's in it and hawkman yeah. uh those are yeah. those are very cool characters but um they were very the, well uh, done I will, I'll, yeah. I'll say that they were they were very well yeah. well done for sure yeah yeah and uh <laughs> uh hbo max has been really good about like uh, a little more than a month later it comes out on hbo max so uh, i always usually wait about a month before i sure. even decide to go to the theater because i don't like it packed and uh yeah so so usually about the time i think oh, i might go see it it's on hbo max now so so yeah uh we may revisit that once it once it comes back out uh but uh, get it for sure yeah I, I would say this i am very happy that Dwayne the rock johnson is on team dc because in, in my heart of hearts i love dc uh i know you do too and in, in your, your your way as well but uh yep yeah. nice. sorry go ahead so so the those of you that have seen black adam and were encouraged to click on our video because of black adam I, I will uh give you a little bit more to uh, go on um i didn't give you the links for it but there's a uh Currently, there's a running series on Black Adam written by Christopher Priest. It's the first series I've actually okay. read of Black Adam. It is, it's very interesting. Uh, he's a very interesting writer. He likes to try different things, and uh, he's a little bit edgy. Uh, so, but it's it's quite and quite enjoyable. It's uh, I think uh, the sixth issue just came out just recently, and also uh, Black Adam is one of the central characters in the uh, dark crisis series that's about to wrap up i think uh, either this month or uh the beginning of, of next month so okay. those those may be hard to track down as single issues uh at the comic book shop but you you'll be able to pick those up digitally 
uh, if you want to do that. But then um, there'll, there'll be some trade paperbacks later on. And I know that uh, at least at my comic book store, uh, there's some, uh, they've got some Dwayne uh, Johnson uh, branded paperbacks of Black Adams that they're, they're selling as well. So uh, it, like I said, if you like uh, Black Adam and you like comic book movies, you might like comic books if you haven't given them a try. So go to your local comic book shop and uh, give it a give it a try. And just to promote mine, uh, my local ones, Kapow Comic Books in Sherwood, Arkansas. So if you're local in the area, uh, give them a try. They're yeah, very yeah, friendly and very helpful. Very cool. Yeah, I would love to visit that one day for sure. And, and my local one that I love to go to is Newcastle Comics uh, up off uh, 270 in uh, De Pere. Our, our, uh, um, uh, I totally butcher that road but not far away from uh, west park plaza the opposite side like and shame on me for not being ready but anyway uh i, I digress i just kind of yeah. uh, i i sprung that uh comic book segue on you so no no that's cool <laughs> i love it, I love it. I, I, yeah i would the only other thing i would say before we move on to our dc news uh because it's segue so to speak uh, naturally uh is that uh you know the violent the level of violence in this is unique to itself um, and I think that that was that was actually refreshing. Um, so it, it's very interesting. Um, and in that, um, I would say that it's it's not okay. So if you're if, you, if your top of your scale is the boys, uh, and I'm sure you're familiar with how gory uh, and and bloody the boys is. Like that's at the top. That's it's not that. Um, but then at the bottom end, you have more like kind of Disney-fied kind of like generic violence against some alien or this or that or whatever and and there are some kind of sort of violent ones disney marvel makes but not like this maybe maybe put this, shazam sort of like at the you know the kid kid friendly level yeah that's that's a fair that's a fair comparison because shazam is very much like that but this this is um this is its own thing like i, I would say that it, it's remarkable I'll, I'll say that but anyway moving on um we got uh we're uh already deep in the cut with uh with the uh, dc and uh I think we had kind of been circling the drain around this for a while, and I think we were both of the opinion of if you have the movie and your test audiences were good, just release it. Uh, but it looks like they are not going to do that, maybe, uh, potentially. So they are they are in. Of course, this is uh, just the hearsay, but um, uh, Ezra Miller uh, was basically put in court and he's his charges are facing from from robbery or whatever it was like it, it could be looking at 26 years so basically <laughs> he is he is uh out <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah like there's no coming back for him uh and it yeah. is what it is uh but yeah uh, i i rem remember back in the day when uh robert downey jr was on a tear and was waking up in a child's bedroom <laughs> after he stumbled into the wrong house and went to sleep but uh but yeah he nowhere near got to the levels of it seems nope. like uh things just keep leveling up so <laughs> you have to be more sh more shocking and more dramatic and uh yeah him and a, a few of the YouTubers out there that that can't seem to stay out of trouble, uh, <laughs> they're uh, they're stirring it up and uh, making things difficult for the big bosses. Uh, Warner yeah. Brothers. They, yeah, they can't clean up this mess. And to me, I, whatever they're gonna do, like as far as I'm concerned, write them off and like let's move on. And like they say, they're yeah. looking for a replacement. And I've said this before: nobody, nobody from these or uh, 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 Warner Brothers or Zaslav never watches our thing. But if you ever did, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just say it. You yeah. know what? Why are you Why are you screwing around? Don't reinvent the wheel. Go with Grant Gustin and make that transition and just make it. Just pretend it never happened and like put him. I promise you that Grant will come through because uh, for all the flack that uh, CW DC got. Um, the first three seasons of The Flash are are good, spot on. And I'd say it's probably the first five episodes are seasons of uh, The Arrow. And then just stop there. <laughs> just stop there and you're good. And you're good. You know, uh, maybe even the first two, only the first two seasons of The Flash. But Grant Gustin as Flash in the WB uh, DC universe yeah. is, yeah. I think that he, I think that he could absolutely make that transition and it would be, a, it wouldn't even be a thing. Um, right. Short of that, I don't really have anybody I would I would name, but mm -hmm. who knows what they're gonna do. But yep. uh, what what do you think? Do you think that they should release the movie? Do you think? Oh yeah, should... <laughs> I, like I said uh, the past few weeks, release it before he kills somebody, or yeah, <laughs> gets locked up, whatever. Right. Release it, release it now. I know they're maybe doing some reshoots or whatnot, but from what the uh, 
what we've heard so far the audience has really been enjoying the movies so on the the special screenings but yeah with, uh black adam on the momentum of black adam yep they gotta, uh, they gotta keep it they, going for sure yeah. Yeah. Yep, and uh, my my favorite DC character, John Constantine, is going to uh, appear again with Keanu Reeves as the title character once again. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I know there I, were JJ yeah. Abrams was was going to do a version of him on um, the HBO Max that I wasn't too enthused about. So I love that they scrapped that and are yep. going to do a Keanu Reeves uh, vision because that, that's the good thing. Because right. From everything I've read or heard, uh, Dwayne Johnson loves Black Adam and is mm -hmm. very invested into DC and, and yep. wants to spearhead things. Uh, from everything I've heard, Keanu Reeves is very enthusiastic about doing John Constantine. So you need those those type of people that want to, want to and, and they're going to be conscious when they're filming. I, I you know they they don't have much. The, the, they tend to have a little bit more influence on story and whatnot when they're they're bigger stars like that so uh if if the movie starts to drift out in a wrong direction uh a lot of times they can maybe correct, correct the sales so to yep. speak yep. <laughs> if it's no. if it's not a total loser and yep. and they don't they don't usually go into a movie if it's a horrible script either so Yep. And, and this is one of the things like where if, if this were like 10 years ago, I would have not ever agreed with the statement at all. Um, but recently you, we have like where actually stars, big mega stars know better than the than the shoot than whoever the muckety mucks at the studios. And, and from what I've read, we don't have them up, but because uh, it would just be too much coverage on Black Adam. But uh, yeah. but I have I did read in other things that I did not include this week. But basically, I read that. Um, uh, 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 Johnson had basically he had some authority and he went to bat for certain concepts and ideas and whatever and he won and it's a good thing he yeah. won and it's a good thing he picked that fight because he I will say this th th there's one thing that uh, and this is a point that I picked up from uh, I, this is not my original thought but I agree with it on uh, one of the live streams from Midnight's Edge in their panel they were talking about how the big differentiator between DC and Marvel right now, like where they could, like where Warner Brothers could really clean up, is the fact that um, they don't have anybody doing like their big mega stars are not really doing the publicity and prom pr promotion that you would naturally see. For and, and some of that is because Disney Marvel, for whatever reason, has taken a turn to the smaller screen. So there's not really a maybe a red carpet of it, maybe maybe not like a movie. So maybe that's a little bit uh, should be taken into totality, uh, totality, excuse me, to total and in totality with the whole th concept. But you have um, you have Keanu Reeves who is passionate about what he does. You have Henry Cavill who was also passionate about The Witcher. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah. should he ever return or whatever, you know that he's going to have an opinion and you know you have to listen to it. Um, that's not a for sure thing, but uh, and and again with uh, with The Rock. He knows what he's doing. And you know what? I say as long as they have a good idea, whether it's Tom Cruise or anybody, I don't care. Um, minus Ezra Miller, because he can just <laughs> go, he can just go away for a while, I guess. But uh anything, I don't want any and I don't want any bad juju on DC because they have tried, they have tried and failed in the past to emulate uh Disney Marvel, like with the formulaic kind of thing, and they failed at it. Uh it was not uh people weren't just didn't catch fire uh and we went through all that whatever the schneiderverse cut all this and that so it'd be it'd be really nice uh to see them keep that momentum going and i'm not quite sure what's going to happen with the flash dude nobody really knows until they say so but uh, i think the next big gig aside from constantine um which is very much in the works uh or the, the pr uh, preliminary stages uh the next one the next shot they have at the box office is going to be shazam too which is going to be in March of uh, next year. So it's not that far away, but they want to keep that. They want to keep things uh, yeah. hot and going. The, and the I, momentum. Yeah. Going. Yeah. yeah and, and with, and, um, and with Keanu Reeves, he's a, uh, he's a huge comic book fan. He uh, actually just recently wrapped up his run on his first comic book creating a berserker. And that's, um, and then that was first started as a Kickstarter and when you watch, uh, um, there's a video of him promoting the Kickstarter for the comic book and the enthusiasm he showed for uh, the comic book and being able to write for the comic book just shows you 
that he doesn't see comic books as a lesser media he's very enthused with it he loves the whole thing and uh from that comic book being such a big success they're going to do a berserker movie based on the comic book as well so he needs yeah. is going to star in that uh the character of berserker looked very much like keanu reeves so i had uh, thoughts that that would eventually <laughs> be what happens but <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. I uh, uh, full speed ahead, but like I, I would love to see good quality material being produced. So, um, this anyway. Moving on to like DC kind of heavy at the top, but um, this one was a kind of a throwaway that I saw. That um, uh, of all people, <laughs> <laughs> of all people, like uh, that that are are vocal on Twitter. This was like the one like that you should pay attention to because um, he makes a great point. Um, uh, basically, he sent a tweet out. Basically, he's he's like, hey, DC. Um, I got a good idea, um, and actually, I'll stop it here at the. Uh, uh, there's a pause button. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, basically, he says, um, "He said naughty word, uh, old westerns. There's plenty of great films. Blah blah blah." blah. You know, I agree. Yeah, there's there, and this kind of goes back to what we've said in passing, which is like seventy years of like uh, seventy, if not longer, years of uh, Superman stories. Like there is plenty there to pull from it just takes the right um the right forces so anyway yep. um yeah this would be great to see this but not much to say than that uh anyway moving on yeah uh, kinda, well, kinda. Uh, yeah yeah it says well, i do make fun of seth rogan saying he's not very very funny anymore <laughs> uh along with uh kevin smith and uh Pat Oswald, maybe their 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 days of funny are are kind of uh, going towards uh, the past. But but Seth Rogen has had his hand in some great TV shows. He's he does, preacher, he does. preacher, The Boys, uh, Invincible. So um, so yeah, um, yeah. As far as maybe a ideas guy, he's maybe better better suited that way these days than uh, being the funny guy. <laughs> I, I, I'd say he's a hundred percent more relevant than Kevin Smith is. Uh, you know, like, or, or, you know, uh, that, that whole thing, like, uh, but he, he does rub people the wrong way and he's, he's just gotta be careful on Twitter. Maybe, maybe stay off of Twitter and don't pick yeah, fight with, yeah. with, don't, don't pick fight with the fans because I don't care how good your ideas are or whatever. Like if you turn that corner and you go too far, mm -hmm. you aren't uh, going to show up, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, the way it goes. Yeah. My advice for everybody stay off of Twitter. <laughs> yep. For sure. Um, um, moving on, uh, WB has uh, they they want to cast Superman, uh, and it's in play. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're uh, muted there. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe not. But uh, I definitely, um, for sure, a year, or two years from now, we'll we'll look back and we'll we'll definitely see the starting point came from Black Adam. And, you know, how it goes from there, it could very easily derail and whatever. But I think the numbers that I saw preliminary for for Black Adam were like 60 to 70 million, maybe. Um, so the higher it gets to, you know, 100 million, the better off it is, and especially the opening weekend. So we're, we're, it's going to be tested real quick because I think next weekend is when or next week or so next couple of weeks is when. Um, Black Panther 2 comes out. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see. But uh, that'll be interesting in itself. And we'll definitely yep. have a commentary on yep. that. Uh, since uh, <laughs> since uh, Black Panther, uh, Black Panther uh, won't be in there since, uh, unfortunately, he uh, passed away. No, uh, it will not be. It'll be the new, whatever the new version of that is, the, you, you'll, is what you'll see. So, uh, yeah. so we'll see. Yeah. And they're uh, introducing characters that uh, haven't captured the imagination of uh comic book fans like riri williams as a uh, iron heart um she's uh stumbled quite a few times trying to launch her off into a successful uh comic book series so um so yeah we'll see if uh, a, a movie comic book movie with her in it is, is the charm uh i know they uh, also did uh america um Chavez. Chavez and uh, Strange, uh, Doctor Strange, and I'll leave it up to you to know whether or not you believe she was successfully launched in that. But yeah, she hasn't captured the comic book imagination at large either. So yeah, yeah. Um, so but but they are trying because um, at least with America Chavez, she's not um, a female version of a certain character, or you know, at least the, the they come up with a new idea whether or not. And it's it's really 
it's really tricky. I mean, there's been hundreds of male superhero characters and hundreds of uh, female superhero characters that just that were launched genuinely. Uh, creators were very passionate about them and wanted them to succeed, succeed but they never did. And then, um, but then they're never out. They're always in the pantheon of superheroes. Someone like, um, you know, back in the day, a, a Neil Gaiman or a, a Alan Moore could grab some obscure superhero character and um, make a huge success with them. So yeah, there's um, no matter what character it is, uh, there's there's always hope for them. Um, so don't don't ever keep count them out. But the key is to write a really good story um and have something resonate with the character within uh the audience so that's that's the key um i know it sounds simple but it's a uh, not an easy thing to do <laughs> yeah I, I yeah and this this article kind of goes in a little bit more and they, they talk about uh there, there might be uh jj uh, abrams uh coats tie-in with um like a like a one-off outside of the universe. Like, <laughs> I, I, I i would normally um, say that but at the same time um if they do it right, I, I I I would say like I would say well well let's see it. Um, hopefully they don't screw it up, especially under Zaslav uh, with the new new Just, management. Uh, like hopefully they can have some guardrails and like keep it there. If, well, if they do it in the vein of like the Joker and but the the thing is though I don't know how if you're having a rebirth of this with Black Adam and other characters, I'm not quite sure how well that would be fit in or how well they would slide that in. So my only question would be. That's like go ahead and do it, but how are they going to be able to show the audience that it's not tied in with all these other things that are happening? Well, so that, that's a the, really that's that that's a eye of the needle kind of thing. I think my my big concern is when I said the uh, story is key. Uh, JJ yeah. Abrams lately hasn't had the best track record, and I have not read anything I I, I have enjoyed by Tanisha Coates. So yeah. I know we'll some people. It. Some people lo- loved his run. Captain America kind of left me cold. So uh, we'll we'll see. I like I said, um, you know, they they could they could prove uh, prove me wrong. But uh, we'll, with that we'll with see. that lineup, I'm not I'm not real excited. <laughs> yeah, the, the only thing that I would say is that uh, you know with Disney Marvel, there's been some disappointments. Um, you know that has sli- been pretty much like slid from the studio uh, right into the garbage chute. <laughs> <laughs> The only difference between that and this is like maybe it is or maybe not. But I would say on a more positive take, uh, James Gunn, I'll, it mentions this here too. And we both like Suicide Squad, the, the last one, uh, and Peacemaker. I think I liked it a little bit more than you did. And I think you like Peacemaker, and I still have yet to go back and rewatch or, or to finish watching that series. But mm-hmm. it's hard. It's, you said it's good. You know, like I need to, I really need to go back and watch because like it, it's good entertainment. But, uh, We'll see uh, what happens. Uh, and the, the other thing, anyway, kind of moving on, but uh, we, we can jump into uh, our next uh, our next one. Do you have anything else to say about DC or whatnot? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Uh, so this was a, was something that you, uh, you uh, shared out, right? Uh, so mm-hmm. what's going on with this guy? Um, yeah. The, the, an AI generated picture won the uh, art prize as a big, uh, art uh competition uh this i think this is um uh was done with diffuse solutions uh this was pointed out by another uh podcast and um but yeah if you look at the picture it looks really good uh looks like it was painted by someone but uh basically it's one of the things where you can i think with the the program that he used you could put in like um, photographic film elements to it and give it suggestions the uh the computer ai uh but um and then it'll generate what it what it thinks you want and um uh basically what what is done here is you, on the, the program that he used you could do multiple passes so uh once you get that okay. first first iteration maybe it's not quite right you put in uh, some more suggestions, some more prompts, and refine the image so you can keep refining it until you get to what you want. Uh, so this is what he ended up with, and uh, this is a piece of art, uh, but it's generated by AI. Now, did the um, now that AI may be a bit of a um, 
a mis misdirect. It's not really AI. It's basically a computer generated program, and it's generating what what it thinks you want. Um, so uh, if you're familiar with our, our discussion of ex machina, it's not like uh, it's its own uh, its own intelligence. No, um, no, it doesn't no. it doesn't truly know what it's doing. It's giving you what it thinks you want. So, yeah. No, so no human. Yeah, yeah. This is. Um, I don't really see the big deal with this because it's just another tool that ours use. And like, if you go through how it's made, you still have to be. It's not like some. It's not like he typed in. He was like super ultra lazy and typed in a bunch of concepts or ideas into like some search box and like, oh, all of a sudden it it made this. No, 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 no. I, I don't. Yeah. Um, it, it is art. It is art for sure. And I, right. I, I, I poo poo those who poo poo it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is definitely a tool i uh, agree with you now with tools uh they can be both creative and destructive depending sure. on how you use them i mean you could uh, use a shovel to dig a, a hole in your yard uh, that is very useful for you or you could take that shovel and slam it over your neighbor's head <laughs> and then kill someone so so it's it, you know, there, there's there's very big things with a tool you um uh, they the them in of itself is is not evil but the things you could do with it is wow. evil um <laughs> Now, uh, I, I won't get into the aspect that the podcaster did because we're uh, more of a family-friendly show. But um, with this, with this AI again, it uses photographs. And in, in the iteration of this, uh, I think it's the fourth iteration of the program where it's improved progressively. And we're going to get eventually to the point where uh, the deep fakes cannot be distinguished from what is real so you're you know and they can be used uh politically say you don't like your other opponent you can uh generate something that looks like he's doing something very illegal and uh who's to say whether or not that's that's true or not so um he the podcaster i watched he posited the idea that um we're we're on the cusp of getting into uh, you know, we're leaving the information age and we're going into the anti-information age where no one trusts anything <laughs> that's right. put in front of them unless they can see it firsthand um that this this is um this is going to cause a lot of interesting questions and sure. a lot of a lot of concern and uh it's it's going to be some interesting times ahead. <laughs> yeah. And uh, to, to piggyback on that a little bit, uh, you know, uh, th these, th these will be answered in the future for sure. Uh, and, and, yeah. and, and pretty soon, I, I think for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The climate, you have to be this team or this team, or you're canceled or not canceled or whatever, or whatever you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. But it is cool. Yeah. Well, well, once, um, whenever, once everybody's canceled, we're, we'll all be on the, the, <laughs> the same, same line. Same level. Yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all, all, it'll be all reset at that point. <laughs> yeah. You can't stop progress. I would just say, I think if anything, it will develop into its own sub, sub, sub genre. Uh, for, no doubt in art, uh, but I, I did read a Hacker News article like a long a while ago that basically took you through a tutorial of how you would use these tools, and it's very, uh, very. You, you still have to draw things, you know, and like what, what I, I mean, it's not just like um, it's not it's not like you can put this in front of grandma, and she's gonna be whipping out like all these like things <laughs> like no 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 no. It, it, there's not, still quite a yeah. quite a level of complexity that you have to go through and know and understand before you can even use these tools. So I'm sure there, uh, you know, what the future may hold, whatever. But you can't yep. stop progress, as they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, it, it's interesting because um, there's uh, another. I, I didn't pull up the article, but there was uh, an anime artist. Uh, I forget his name. That I think died, I read a headline about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, just uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, right, right when he died, uh, this individual made a uh, programmed an AI to generate uh, the artist's uh, 
anime style of art and so that uh you could go in and create your own anime with his art style and that could be achievable to be done with any any artist uh you could go ahead and program it to do uh, a jack kirby style artwork and so that's going to be interesting as far as because there was a big uh blow up about it because the artist had just died and it, is that a disrespectful for the artist um but i i think he's like I said tools don't have a mor morality to them they're they're used however we want and we decide the morality of them so again it's kind of an interesting interesting times and uh interesting questions that are ahead of us and uh we as a society will decide um what, how how we use those tools and whether or not they're they're good or not So oh, you're uh, you're muted again. <laughs> so uh, as we move on to the next one, uh, this this one is a little bit more internet related. Uh, speaking of toxic, yep. <laughs> or potentially be toxic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I I don't know how how much our audience know about Rooster Teeth, so I'll, I'll keep it as brief as I can. But I, I find it interesting, uh, just as a maybe a cautionary tale for companies. Um, now, Rooster Teeth uh, were started by, I think, four or five diff five guys. They started it because they, they liked machinima. They wanted to try to animate a animated series by using the, um, the engine uh, in Halo, the Halo game. They, they used the game engine um, <laughs> on the multiplayer maps to actually animate a series. And it was a surprise hit on the internet and it led to them making this company. And they've, they, at one point they built it up to hundreds of employees. Uh, they had a hit anime, anime series, Ruby. Yeah. Um, they, they branched out into uh, let's plays. They had a let's play channel with achievement hunter and fun house. And they were getting millions of views. I, I kind of latched on to them with achievement hunter. I like those guys. Uh, again, it was just a bunch of stupid guys playing video games. They were very, very funny. And I enjoyed watching their, their content. Uh, but yeah, uh, th and they were they've eventually been bought uh, by Full Sail or, or I'm sorry I think it was Full Sail uh, but eventually uh, they passed through to AT&T and they're currently owned by Warner Brothers Discovery uh, that big conglomerate okay. but um, <laughs> the, the bad thing is starting a few years ago they've started hitting controversies uh, there, there was a couple one of the members of um, Achievement Hunter turned out to be a horrible, horrible guy that uh, was getting into um, some bad things, and uh, along with a, a Funhouse member as well, and um, also Mika Burton, which is uh, LeVar Burton's uh, daughter, said oh. that she ran into a lot of racism within, within and without uh, the company from the fans as from the fans uh as far as their comments toxic fans so to speak mm -hmm. and uh when she went to the company for support um they kind of gave her a bit of a cold shoulder and uh so and this is uh, the recent salvo against uh, rooster teeth uh uh kaden uh she she's left the company back i think in july or june june or july and she wrote a big twit longer about it and she brought up the fact that they were using her her nickname before she transitioned. Um, they gave her a slur, um, a gay person starting with an F. I think you could probably figure that one out. Uh, right. Which they they couldn't use on their uh, on their on their content, so they they changed it to Fugs. <laughs> they called her Fugs on there. Um, now, she also brought up the fact that um, there was a lot of being underpaid whenever she was um, an intern, it was unpaid, but when she became a full-time employee, they promised her, one of the promises was that she would eventually get paid for that time, and she never did, and when she brought it up, they said, oh, are you really going to? You know, you're getting paid now. What's what's the big deal? <laughs> and um, 
and she found a lot of unsupportive things within the company. I, you could go through the twit longer if you right. really want to find all the details. And there's also some other channels that detail it. Uh, but <laughs> but it's it's kind of weird because the some of the achievement hunters that were accused of calling her uh, the F slur did did actually say that they did and that yeah, it they, was they, they cop to yeah. it they cop to it yeah. uh, they they did cop to it and said that they were immature and uh there was that climate early on back in the day that you know that guys palling around could maybe say things that they don't normally do within within a guy culture and that's i think that that comes from the growing pains of a company starting off as right. a group of guys doing things you know the the even the um the name of the company is a bit of a uh spicy word rooster teeth uh came from cockbite <laughs> <laughs> so so and they couldn't call their company that so they kind of twisted it so it's kind of the growing pains of a company going from uh kind of a uh uh kind of a boys club kind of in the you know kind of mixing it up and then trying to become like a legitimate company, but still trying to retain the hey, we're just a bunch of guys kind of kind of vibe to it. And that doesn't always work. Um, and also there's another controversy uh, with uh, Adam Kovic from Unhouse. He got let go a couple of years ago because I think he, they, he was taking naughty pictures of himself uh, within the uh office spaces and talking and he was catfished and whatnot it comes to find out that things kind of go down the rabbit hole he was so uh sexually harassing women and uh the one of his co-workers bruce green that was their his manager had uh had wanted to fire adam and had went to the uh, head of Rooster Teeth HR and said, I, I need to get rid of this guy because he's being very toxic towards women and and doing some illegal things with harassing her. And they, they just laughed at him. And so Bruce ended up quitting. Uh, so yeah, back in the day when he quit, everybody was like, why is this guy quitting? And uh, I couldn't find out. Um, he was he was he was standing up for for his morals and then a, a few months later after he quit uh that big thing came out where uh, wow. where adam had been um <laughs> up up to uh up to no good uh so they finally had a cop to it once that it but they didn't want to get rid of him because he was a big personality for the company and uh yeah so it's it's kind of it's interesting uh, to see the destruction of a of a company that didn't didn't learn how to become a company once it came time to get your big britches on and, and actually own up to the things that you were doing wrong and maybe fix the things that that should be fixed. And I the um, back in the day. Uh, several years ago, um, you know, Achievement Hunter video would get millions of views. Now it's down to the tens of thousands. Uh, so the it's it's gone quite a bit down. So with all of this controversy, you have to wonder if Zaslav, <laughs> when he turns his eye to uh, Rooster Teeth, uh, <laughs> finds out that he actually owns this company. <laughs> the, you know, the, their their days I think are are very much numbered at this point, and a lot of the a lot of the talent that I, I love from Rooster Teeth, like uh, Ray Narvaez Jr., which I've recommended before on uh, his channel, he's he went on to become a very successful Twitch streamer and YouTube personality. And I think uh, and Jeremy Dooley has done the same and Bruce Green. Uh, so, so all of those guys, I think that the guys that have talent and are uh and have fans will will uh land on their feet and uh, i think the company may have may have shot themselves in their own feet and are gonna be die <laughs> die because this, of it <laughs> this sounds exactly like g4 but the the rant that uh Fruskirian did is actually true <laughs> and actually like there was bad shit that happened and yeah i, I you know i mean uh, yeah what? yeah screw up a good and, thing and, uh, like you yeah. gotta be cool and, yeah. like uh yeah. yeah it's not a locker room uh, i guess yeah I don't know. <laughs> yeah and then that that picture of uh jeff ramsey and bernie burns bernie burns uh right before 
uh, I think in 2019, he just left the company. And you, yeah, everybody was, was kind of confused on it. And um, now it makes sense. I think it makes sense that he just decided he, wa- he wanted to wash his hands of things and, and get out of there while the getting was good. And, um, and then Jeff, Jeff Ramsey still with it, with them. Uh, but, uh, but he's, like I said, he's owned up to the bad things he's done. He, he did go through being an alcoholic for the long, for a, a big majority of the time he was with Rooster Teeth. So, uh, I think he's trying to, uh, kind of correct the wrongs of his past and I don't have any ill, ill feelings towards him and the whole Rooster Teeth uh or well with with him and select rooster teeth people but but yeah there's definitely some bad characters in there (laughs) no kidding no kidding yeah yeah moving on uh yeah uh exclusive this kind of brings us up to our uh our uh, right before we go into the uh, thing or do you want to hold this until uh well i guess maybe um yeah 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 uh yeah so uh i have read this book um, by Kevin J. Anderson and um, and Brian and uh, Brian Herbert and uh, I I enjoyed it. It was not as good as the. Uh, there's definitely a, a spectrum here, right? So there's like there's Frank Herbert's uh, works and then there's his son and Kevin J. Anderson and some people don't like the newer stuff with the son and and Kevin. Um, I don't have a problem with it, but, uh, you know, like I think probably this is probably not one of the better ones, um, novels, uh, in my opinion, um, kind of went a little fast, but apparently they're, they're, they're looking to, uh, make this into a, the next installment of their comic book series. They did house of Trades, and now it looks like they're doing house, uh, Harkonnen house of Trades. Uh, I, I, I really need to revisit that and, and, and give a, get, give a take on it, but I did follow along in the comic books and they were good, good enough. I mean, I I enjoyed them, uh, but they're they're going to do the same thing with uh, with Boom. So that's the Boom. next uh, the next thing coming out for comic in uh, Dune comics coming out, and uh, I think it'll yeah. be good. So yeah, we'll see, yeah, yeah. I think um, with Frank Herbert, his stuff gets a little bit more uh, philosophical and in the head kind of thing, whereas. Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. I haven't read anything by them, but from what mm. I heard, it's more more of a traditional kind of action science fiction type story. It is, it, so, it, it's on the scale of like if you go back in time to uh, before Disney should can the expanded universe and basically nullified all the novels that were written before a certain time. Uh, like those were just gone. Um, with that, Star like Wars. He, when he, yeah, the Star Wars novels, like when Kevin J. Anderson was a Star Wars author, like I followed, I, I read quite a few of his books and I was always entertained. I mean, they weren't amazing, uh, but they did not suck either. I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, so, yeah. eh, you know, uh, it is what it is, but like, uh, anything that's pro Dune, uh, sure. Why not? You know, like, uh, the good stuff's going to stick around the bad, you know, the stuff that doesn't, doesn't. So it is, that is what it is, but yeah, this is just the kind of the next chapter in comic books and in, in Dune. Our Dune and comic book land uh, is going to be House Harkonnen. So be interesting to see how they do that uh, for, for sure. Uh, yeah. And then kind of moving on. Um, so this is this is definitely this was greenlit and we kind of sort of covered it, uh, but not directly. Uh, but we are. Well, this is one of the things that there's starting to be more news picking up about it anyway, for sure. Uh, so it's got some momentum uh, and we'll see. I, I think. Um, I hope that they do a good job, and I, I have faith that they – I hope they they will, but we'll see. Uh, I really don't know until it's going to pop out. So uh, what are your thoughts? The the Sisterhood, that was uh, with Whoopi Goldberg, right? The, yeah, yeah the Sister Act. Sister Act. <laughs> sister yeah. Act, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, the, uh, the Bene Gesserit from Dune have always been kind of interesting to me. So, yeah, the Sisterhood – I has promised uh again they're they're trying to build out dune as a as a big franchise oh. and uh hopefully that'll uh launch off into yeah. to some great things all, all they all they have it's already been done the hard work the heavy lifting has already been done they don't need to inject any kind of anything into this they just need to stay true to the to the spirit of the thing and just and just it, it's such a layup it's such a layup especially in this time and era you know, uh, uh, you know, like with the message or whatever, like none of that. We don't need that. It's already built into it's for crying out loud. If they can't if they can't take this and make something out of it, like then mm-hmm. I'll be very disappointed if they can't like uh, lean into the grain of it and and make some, 
it's already <laughs> it's, it's it's somewhat modern. It's what modern or what yeah. certain folks are looking for a more modern take. Like this is like built into yeah. the freaking storyline. So like you can't yeah. you can't uh, you can't screw it up. Uh, right. But yeah. well, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> pray to God that they they don't screw it up. But yeah. like uh, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, and then um, yeah, and like you said, uh, Frank Herbert built in is a lot of uh moral messages and uh some a okay. lot of a lot of big ideas in his in his stuff and he's he's actually a, a good example of how how to do it correctly and to weave it into a narrative where it doesn't just come launching out and hit you over the head and say here's the message and rub your nose in it he, he weaves it weaves it into the story and gives uh, various takes on it from various uh, perspective of various characters and makes it a, a rich rich story uh, that you could draw a message from yep. or or just leave it as a as a rich enjoyable story so yeah and uh, there are some yeah there are some concepts and aspects of this that, that are going to come in through the door um, because I, uh, I I went on a tear and I, I pretty much read through just about everything up to like maybe I'm missing two novels, um, but I pretty much consumed everything that Brian uh, and Kevin did up to like maybe two years ago. Um, so there's some things that I missed, but like if they fudge it, um, there are certain concepts that they might not be comfortable with bringing in and being introduced. Like you can't, you can't make this and like make in any male characters dumb or incompetent or what. That's not how this works. Like, especially with the with the spirit uh, to play to Frank's original ideas and what this is and what it means, and going far beyond that, um, he crafted a a universe, um, and it should be treated uh, with respect and delicacy. And there's certain adaptations that have to be made to fit it to the small screen, so to speak. But um, yeah, I have faith. I have faith, and um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting. I I would say that. Um, I think it's a good thing that we didn't hear anything about the Balari Jihad, um, because like that, those three novels uh, that that kind of play into the lore, the the world building of like why there are no machines and computers in Dune, um, that is epic. Just the first novel, just the first novel is so epic and wide ranging. There's no way I could see them putting it on the big screen or the small screen, and if they did. I don't know, like that, and then and then to try to turn that on its head, and then turn it into like a a, a series or whatever, or movies or a trilogy or whatever they have in mind. Um, this also goes. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm telling you, like this thing goes on and on, because you learn about the Bene Gesserit, you learn about uh, why there's no machines, you learn about the Spacing Guild, you learn about all these kind. Of, they're very intertwined, and I think that if they do it right. Like I said before, I, I wasn't kidding when I said, and I'll touch on it here uh, toward the end of, the, uh, of our of our time together. But uh, I said it before: 1977 is to Star Wars what Dune is to 2021. If they do it right, if they do it right, if they have good uh, good uh, visionaries that know how to craft it, and they have some business guardrails, we could be looking at the the dawn of something that could be very wide ranging um and i would be I, I, it would be awesome if in 20 years from now i could say i'm i'm sick of seeing the latest dune movies or whatever like i'd love to say that but uh gotta get there first so who knows who knows yep. we'll see we'll see very precarious times we live in with these things yep. for sure they may be uh going to um a theme park uh all uh dune related <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You know. You never know. You never know. It's it's why they have they have um, they they put in theme park exceptions into contracts now because of a uh, J.K. Rowling and uh, <laughs> the Harry Potter universe. So yeah. <laughs> well, and and uh, and what I was going to touch on uh, what I mentioned uh, in the, in the uh, the first part of the show was that uh, you know um, Dune uh, the whole point of science fiction or horror or any comic books any, any of that creative any anything creative uh fictional creative is that it it inspires other people to do things along those lines or to talk about or whatever and i can say without a doubt i can point to dune um all that almost a year ago uh which was like with the genesis for like you know i've always wanted to do this 
and it's not just me. It's inspired other people. Um, and there's a very uh, happening Facebook group that's like, uh, I, I got to check on. I haven't been in, back in, in a minute, but there's a very active uh, Dune Facebook group that was made in like the early OOs. Uh, and it's just like, it's kind of like the gathering place. And uh, I, I know that you have posted there and I've had nothing but positive experiences, something that like I have not been able to have in a very, very long time. Just as a fan and nerd, you can, you can, you can go back and forth with your community of folks, uh, uh, but it's uh, very active and, and um, mm -hmm. I'd say pretty positive and funny. Uh, but uh, that it, no doubt inspired folks to get involved and and to see that. So yeah. we'll and, see and how it goes. But uh, yeah. steady as he goes for sure. Yeah. And then to cap that off. Um... Hopefully in a, uh, I think in a week, a uh, couple weeks, we're going to celebrate our anniversary with yeah. a anniversary episode uh, going over uh, Dune again, the uh, 2021, and uh, maybe it up with the uh, comparing it to the Dune 1984. Yep. And then uh, I think we're going to uh, try to make an invitation to that Facebook group to uh, check us out as well Absolutely. once we get it published. Yeah, uh, things are uh, on the up and up. For sure. Dune and Dune and us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, here we are. And so uh, this is a, a special recommendation, and I know we talked talked offline about this a little bit in, in passing, um, but this is a first of, official recommendation. So, well, <laughs> what's going on with this? This is a, definitely Adult Swim. Not, yeah, not for the faint of heart material for sure. You're right. Yeah, uh, there. It's also on HBO Max. And I think Hulu as well. I watched it on HBO Max. They they only have uh, one season. Uh, episode nine came out just recent. Um, after after a year or two, uh, I think they're gearing up for season two. Uh, it's um, it's a bunch of internet uh, YouTube guys that actually got a uh, <laughs> uh, animators that got a got a show, and so it's very. The humor is very um, avant-garde and very internet related. So, um, but yeah, they tell, don't swim. Yeah, uh. yeah they, <laughs> they, they tell some very off kilter and very funny stories. Um, it's uh, one of those, the, a lot of animated shows that I, I can kind of pace myself and watch one at a time with the, these guys. I wanted to watch an episode. You know, I just kept wanting to watch. Um, so this is very rare at this point because, um, you know, I just don't have it in me to binge watch things anymore. So uh, it's kind of leans to the quality of something as far as what I like, uh, whether or not I, I binge them or not. And this is one that I definitely binged. So, <laughs> very cool. uh, yeah, but yeah, this is, this is going to the top of the list for me to, to check out sooner than later, for sure. And um, this this ties into my YouTube re recommendation, so that's why I I, I thought of this. Um, and uh, you know, it's horror. It's um, kind of Halloween month, so uh, we're all kind of focusing focusing on horror. And so I thought I'd bring up uh, a little bit of a cheesy horror page. Uh, there's a lot of uh, various channels that um, show uh, like surveillance footage of creepy stuff and possible ghost. Uh, related things and chills does <laughs> compilations of scary videos of uh, doorbell cams and surveillance cams and uh, probably 99 percent of this is uh faked or <laughs> not not chills doesn't fake it he, he uh, cultivates it and pulls it from around the uh, internet and youtube and, and whatnot so and uh he knows his audience are, are 10 and 12 year olds and uh you know he kind of gears it towards them saying i don't know if this is fake or not but you oh. you be the judge <laughs> but he he's kind of cultivated a, a fun kind of voice i i do do an impression um it's like uh, you know he goes through the numbers he goes number five <laughs> uh, uh, a man confronts a demon uh but yeah and the, <laughs> they do um <laughs> he they the smiling friends that um comedy animated series i mentioned they did invite him to uh do a guest voice on it and he was in um in a, a cafe uh, or coffee shop and he was <laughs> he was doing like uh i want a number five <laughs> yeah so 
but yeah he's he does a little guest appearance on uh smiling friends but yeah yeah so yeah some of these videos are, are pretty creepy uh, a lot of them you can figure out what's going on and there's a whole a whole genre on the um on youtube of these the the ones that i i kind of enjoy are um and again i i know for the most part uh these are fake there was a big trend back in the day where people would order packages the dark web and show you what you got and and oh, <laughs> they were yeah. they're always always fake but i i loved watching them because of their stupid cheesiness of them uh but there's the ones that i currently enjoy watching that that do creep me out uh, at times are are the doorbell of videos of just random creepy people showing up at the door uh there's there's one of uh there was back in the day back during the clown scare they had a lot of uh clowns oh, that yeah. would show up it's... on uh, doorbell cams <laughs> right right on that's funny but yeah yeah so if you uh cool. if the Halloween kind of gets around and you um don't have any streaming services and you want to just watch something goofy and scary you can uh, watch some uh chills videos and uh have a laugh and uh maybe have a can, little scare <laughs> can, you can kind of put the subtext of it's creepy tonight yeah. sure. <laughs> moving on uh you have one comic book recommendation this week and that's uh that's mr namor yep. uh, who will soon be uh coming out uh next week i think uh next week or two or whatever it is mm -hmm. for the black panther uh i believe he Wakanda forever yeah yeah, yeah it's no yep. secret that he's a, one of the main uh crossovers yep. or draws yeah. or whatever whatever however you want to put it Yep. Uh, but this, yeah. this is the comic book yeah i think yeah. uh he's um kind of relocated in the movie from uh, atlantis to um gulf of mexico i believe or something like kinda that. Weird. yeah kinda weird, yeah but we'll see how that we'll, we'll see how yeah. that works out if, yeah, we'll uh, see how if it pans uh, out <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll see if it's as popular as uh, uh latinx was for uh, <laughs> latinos and hispanics uh across america because that was a, <laughs> well, we'll see who you know hope springs yeah. eternal yeah yeah uh but yeah namor the submariner conquer doors it's written by our pal christopher kentwell uh which has written uh, a few yep. things that uh i've i've enjoyed uh he's he's finishing up his run on iron man and you're looking forward to that uh star trek uh series that he's, he's gonna do uh but yeah this, this is a limited series it's gonna be six issues long and it takes place in the future um the uh climate climate warming or whatever has happened uh -huh. and and the oceans has swallowed up most of the world and uh -huh. so the uh, Atlant Atlantean are are the big dogs now and the humans are on the, their way to extinction and Namor's uh trying to keep the peace between the Atlanteans and the remaining humans on the human side you have uh, elderly captain america trying to uh keep things going and at the end of the first issue of uh, the appearance of the original human torch not the uh johnny storm one uh, from fantastic four but from the uh golden age where namor's from there was the human torch uh that uh that was an android so um there's there's him so it's it's gonna maybe and so you got your golden age superheroes of captain america namor and human torch so uh could be fun it's uh the first issue was was entertaining i liked it uh if you could look past the <laughs> if you're if you're uh, a little bit um triggered <laughs> as they say by uh climate change that um i don't know if, uh, that may have a sway over whether or not you read it or not but uh but yeah it's a it's a decent story and I, i'm enjoying it so um Very and cool. that it, that it's a kind of a future a future what if i always enjoy those what if type stories sure indeed indeed all right very cool very cool yeah and the uh, next one releases uh november 20s or november 16th mm -hmm. so a little bit of time here looks yeah. like it's monthly yeah. monthly looks like maybe. Yeah. yeah so um okay. yeah you can go to your local comic book shop they should still have some issues of this left or you can get it digitally whichever very cool. Very cool. uh and then it'll eventually i'm sure get uh collected into a trade paperback so if you like to read your stuff all at once they'll you'll have that in uh probably six months to a year's time indeed and that brings us up to the uh, caboose and uh as as always like we just uh published this today uh and of course we'll be releasing a grab bag every wednesday 
but this is uh, our latest found footage, dead stream, and as above, so below. Uh, go check it out. Uh, if you like it, uh, give us a little uh, subscribe or a little little like or dislike too. That's fine too. Or a comment if you want. Um, but in any case, um, that, I think that wraps up this week. This week's grab bag. Uh, it's a, a pretty good, pretty good one. And uh, we're gonna have a jam packed one next week, for mm -hmm. sure, with our uh, Halloween special video too. So yep. stay yeah, tuned and, and see uh, what we do on on, yeah. on uh, Halloween. Yeah, uh, Halloween. Sure. The, we're gonna end up uh, Halloween with a bang and uh, maybe a few surprises. So absolutely, absolutely. I've been Mike, and I'm Thomas. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, ring that bell for notifications because. Uh, you know, YouTube doesn't always like to show you when our videos come out. So, and also, uh, yeah, uh, we're we're on that push for subscribers. So, uh, yeah, what? and uh, let's build up that momentum. Let's uh, hit forty-two like I've been wanting. <laughs> Please, if you can't do one thing, subscribe to our video. Yes. Humbly, we 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 ask, we request, right. we ask. Yeah, uh, and with that, uh, you know, peace among worlds. I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And we're uh, closing up the grab bag until next week. We'll see you later. See ya.